Hello, welcome to Shooting the Shift. I'm Bam. That's Bryn. That's Milton. No. And this week, Milton's our special guest, I guess. All about the boy wonder. It is all about boy wonder this week. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to talk about Jim Carner, Formula G, Auto Solo, all those fun little short races that Milton does. Um how to get into them, what you need to do to set your car up, all that good stuff, just like Drifting for Dummies, hence the title of the episode, Jim Carner for Dummies. We're really sticking to topic. Keeping on trend there. Well, on, yeah, yeah, on trend, mate. It's going to be perfect. Um, so last week's episode uh, was a good one with Chris. Um, then we dropped the random unboxing video, and there are more of those coming. I've spent some money this week. Um, unnecessarily turns out that shipping from Australia is expensive so uh, in the comments just have a guess which mystery box is on its way from Australia um, is that the one is that the same people it's a trap I think it was their admins I don't think it was actually them though uh, before you try and sh- throw, start throwing shade around again this week. Oh, <laughs> me? Never. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so um, we've got the Bonner and Fitz video, if you want to know what comes in there, mystery boxes. Um, this week, just as an update from me, I have received another box from a friend of mine by way of a thank you for some stuff I did to help them out, which is my silly little, silly little magic box here. So, I really wanted the ETC voice in the Honda Spike to still be there. Have not found an ETC that fits. So my friend has had this shipped all the way from Australia for me. What? For dummies? (laughs) And what does that do? It just gives me a little Japanese voice when I start the car, Milton. It's a weeb box. It is a weeb box. Yes, you're right. <laughs> that with a D uh, or a B? I, I, like, I, it had the ETC in it when I got it. Um, and it's not as naggy a set of words. It's just, hello, have a good drive. It's not, where's the card? Put the card in so we can take your money. <laughs> Which is what the normal normal voice is. Um, Much more pleasant. Bryn, you've had some interesting parcels that we're allowed to talk about uh yes yes well i mean firstly let's go with my favorite one firstly i received this envelope which contained this empty bag and a hundred loose washers (laughs) what size washers uh they are m10 four these 40 of which have now arrived for those who want maybe want or don't know about them. Uh, this is a tow hook for deuce kits on the MX-5 because the standard tow hooks that you can get on the market don't really fit because the mouth is a different width. It really annoyed me. I made one for my car. Lots of other people said they would want one. So these will be available on Rear Axle Divergent soon uh, in black or red. And I will post about that on Saturday. Hmm. Tomorrow. Yes to two days ago. That one. <laughs> Time traveling. Seamless. <laughs> By the time you see this, they'll already be available. Link in the description. <laughs> As, As always. always. Um, right, so um, now that we've done stealing the limelight from Milton for <laughs> all of five minutes, <laughs> uh, first things is don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, drop a comment below on what you think of Milton's Jim Carner or O Solo, whatever it is, advice. And if you'd like to see Bryn's toe hooks in any other colours, like neon blue and neon pink. I mean, you can make that request, but... Whether or not you'll do anything with it. <laughs> no, it's just addition. Admin fees may apply. <laughs> so, then. So, so, yeah, so Milton, obviously, champion of champions 2019... King of the Bins. 18? 2018, okay. Yeah. Mantas kicked my up. Mantas. What? Mantas happened, that's what. 
<laughs> is that is that a sore point, Milton? No, I love Mantas. He's great. I know we all love Mantas. Didn't he get further than you with the yeah, win? Yeah, also well? slightly better than Milton, apparently. <laughs> He's a lot better, and he also won Jim Carner Grid, no, like it... the world, pre- like the world stage of Formula G, basically. So Mantas, it's a real shame you weren't available this week. We'll just have to settle for Milton. <laughs> yeah, I did. We did ask. We did ask Mantas, and he did ask to get notified when this was going live. So, okay. hi Mantas from the hi, future. Yeah. <laughs> They, they drive the same car. He's, he's basically yeah. a low-rent Mantas. It'll do. Yeah. I bet you Mantas he, can grow more facial hair, though. Yeah, he can. And he always wears a shirt. Like a check pla- plaid shirt. Oh, well, that's nothing wrong with that. He's so, no, he's, so, he's the most sophisticated racer ever. Stylish champions are what you need. Yeah, he's he's cool. So, 2018 champion of champions. Let's get yeah. back to Milton now before he gets sad. Give him his proper title. He is the king of the bins. Okay. Boy Wonder, king of the bins. There you go. Full name. Technically undefeated and unable to be the crown taken off me for for, uh, Fueltopia Barrel Sprint. He's he's basically Bin (laughs) Jong-un. That sticker needs to happen, Bren. No. Wouldn't it be Bin John 1? Hey! <laughs> I'm not going to ask for an edit there. I'm not going to make the edit. This episode's going really well already. Um, <laughs> another week, also another week without Matt to try and keep the rabble in order. Because um, he's still busy making his house. He, he did turn up for the episode, but um, it was echoey and not fun. And he had very poor internet because, as Bam says, he's he's making his house. He's actually building the internet from scratch. Apparently, yeah. the whole internet. Yeah, <laughs> there's a little box, like the size of a butter cup. What, like that big? <laughs> no, it's bigger than that. Like the size of a clover tub. <laughs> You're referencing my clover tub. Well reminded. <laughs> I'd just like to point out. To all the people that messaged me, because surprisingly, people did actually message me. I don't just keep butter on my desk, okay? These things are filled with car parts. There's a sandwich plate that's nice and clean. I'm not a weirdo! (laughs) Well. Bren, the mullet says otherwise, mate. Yeah, well, you know. You're a little bit weird, but in a good way. Milton, king of the bins. Jim Carner. As everybody knows it. But actually, it's just auto solo side by side, right? It's a mix of it's a mix of drift, drag and race. So it's two pe- two two tracks that are mirrored and then you, it is a timed race between the two of you. You do one one person does left side, one person does right, you swap over and then you do each you swap tracks. And then it's collective time and as fast as time wins. So, it's not just whether you get... Because, so, say, I've never done auto solo. Brim might be able to testify to this. But you could have, say, a, a lot of drivers and one driver gets a session in the morning where it's dry and we'll set a blister in time and it'll rain during. The de- rain during. So the next people are all racing on a wet track so he gets the win. Yeah. With Formula G, that only really affects us in qualifying, but... When it comes to battles, everyone is, it's the same track for that five minutes or so. So it is down to best driver at that time. That's that's fair. No, that's, I think that's probably fairer because I know I've had MX5 owners club rallies. I've gone on the auto solo course there and set a time and then it rained all day. And I still gloat about how much I beat everybody by. Oh, standard. It's timing. It's timing that my sponsor at the time there just was like, you can go and play for a bit while we set up. <laughs> Makes sense. I mean, the way that I've always looked at uh, Formula G and Jim Carner is that they're basically auto testing for people who are too much of a show off to do auto testing but want to go fast on like drifters. <laughs> It's it's kind of glamorous auto testing, really, isn't it? It's it's a li- there's a little bit more show and a little it's bit. It's a more back. showman and it's yeah. competitive and it's it's the ba- the good thing about battles of drifting is it's there and you've got a 
you cheer, you cheer for one or the other. Auto solo, it's very man with a clipboard, and then you find out at the end of the day how you did. Yeah, There's no... That dude with a clipboard, just imagine how much power he has. <laughs> Add an extra zero, I was. down wrong, <laughs> right? There's no fa- it's not like drifting, where there could be favouritism in the score. No! Never. Never. Happens. Never happens. See, I've remembered things from our yeah. drifting with dummies thing. So yeah. you said it's got drifting elements in it, Milton, but yep. I don't remember you mentioning there being any scoring for style. It's not. It. That's just but crowd-pleasing, right? It's yes, and it's sometimes the fastest way around that part of the track slash obstacle. Fair enough, fair enough. Because it's, it's all about momentum and because there'll be figure of eights around barrels, around tractor tyres, around cones, or you've got to go a certain direction and you've, it's quicker. Instead of using the steering to drive around, hmm. it's quicker to pull the handbrake and rotate at the rear around. No, that's fair. Obstacle. That's fair. Because I think it. I'm still inclined to believe it's more showboating, just because uh, I've been in a car with you on the parade lap, mate. Oh, the parade lap. That's hundred Coventry Motorfest. That's just pure showmanship. And because during a race, you should never ever get out of your car and then pretend to walk it with a with a bit of rope. Or do a press up. Do press ups on the roof <laughs> while the it's driving. Page, mate. Definitely While shouldn't still do that moving race. forward. Yeah, each time it's each With year I try. Passenger seat. <laughs> each year I try and step up the tricks that I do. Okay. So the well, first year was standing on the seat using my foot to steer, and then I think I f- I jumped out and ran off of the car. Next year, I used part of my trailer strap, so it's about this long, and I hung it over the wing mirror while it was going along and walked it like it's a dog, and then I did the press ups and stuff. So. Well, so I'm not be happy until you're doing like press up handstands on the roll bar. Like, just saying. I could. Tr- I mean, at that point, you're basically doing spinning, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> can I can I come with you and I'll hang out the side of the car? I want to be in the passenger seat filming that, Brent, and occasionally grabbing the steering wheel and just quickly jerking it to see. It sounds more like it's now a clown car. But <laughs> <laughs> but that that is an element of. Uh, Jim Carner that you don't get in a lot of testing that I really like is the showmanship. That's yeah. the that, to be fair, that we don't do that. It's only at commentary we do that. It's just well, for because we get a crowd. Yeah, but there is still a bit of it, isn't it? If you go to uh, like an auto solo or like proper auto solos, it's just a load of really stripped out cars that do not look good because they're fast. But people who do Jim Carner care. Like they bring cars that look good and there is no reason for that because you get no points for it. Yeah, but you could uh, turn yeah. off in people. They want to do it, don't they? It's it's all part of the fun. It's building your car and making it good. And fact, when you get to certain levels, you can you get sponsors. And one thing I want to make clear is you do not need any sponsorship to do well. Just because you've got stickers on your car doesn't mean you're going to win, unless they're VRS stickers. That's links yeah. in the description. That is true. Yeah, because the year that we gave him stickers, he won. I won two events. You gave me two. I won two championships. You gave me two stickers. Yeah. Think about that. That's science. There's magic science with still. Bryn. That's, that's science approved. <laughs> <laughs> Bryn approved. So, so yeah. So let's. So, so we know where you've ended up, and that that kind of gives credence to what you're going to say next, right? So, if I was to say to you, and this would make Milton an incredibly happy boy, actually, if I turned around, Milton, I'm bored of grip driving. I don't want to be a silly drifty boy. I'm coming to Jim Carner. Yep. What car do I want to start with? Whatever car you've got. It literally doesn't matter. There's because this year they're running two classes. You've got rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. So they're no longer used to be three. So like caterums, kit cars and things would be in their own class. This year, I think just to make it maybe try and push the competitiveness of it because obviously kit cars are just going to be super light and super fast. So you've got to try and keep up with them. So all I've just heard is there's a four wheel drive class. Yep. Very competitive. You've got, and is it start from the rear of the car 
Or the front of the car on the line. You will lose it's... if you try and take the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Not if it starts from the rear of the car, Brent. <laughs> No, you will still it's, lose. I've seen some of those obstacles. You cannot get a car that big around them. You wouldn't, yeah, some of the tight. But saying that, we there was uh, Jake Archer used to run a Subaru Impreza estate. And he yeah. run it well. Park one of those next to the stage here, mate. <laughs> I don't know how big cars are. Stage it, stage it. The stage it is as long as a twin cab Hilux. Yeah, so you're going to struggle because this is an event that's all about agility. Like, yeah. It's car mobility. It actually, funnily enough, came from horse, raid- horse riding. Jim Carner is a horse riding event. So for those of you who came here thinking we were going to talk about horses, we're not. Nay, hey. <laughs> hey, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I really hoofed that joke, didn't I? <laughs> so, so, right. So any car I want, but by the sounds of those classes, not front wheel drive. Yep, you can have front wheel drive as well. So which class do I enter if there's Oh sorry, I should have said two wheel drive. Okay. Should have yeah, been more. So it could be front wheel drive or rear wheel drive. Motorbike, so does that count? That's one that's one wheel drive. Unless you get one with Trike. A trike. I could come in a trike. Oh, I wonder if a motorbike would count. Loophole. Wait, Robin Reliant. Well, that's yeah. going to lose. That's just going to fall over. Can you imagine that? You go Because usually it's got a long straight and then it curves at the top. Usually just yeah. show a bit of power. Just go up and then rolls. <laughs> so if you want to see us... Flat, one of them Morgans, that would work. Oh, or yes. Like one-wheel drive. One-wheel drive. Mm, right. So, so we've, we've, we've picked our car and because we you haven't can... got any specification... The answer is MX-5. Yeah, exactly. Last year, there was seven or eight in the top ten by the end of the year. And the top four were all MX-5s, so it shows... And that's that's how... purely because, at the end of the day, you can tune it as much as you want, right? Yeah, and yeah. they don't weigh anything, and they're really short. It's the, it was yeah. the same in the auto testing. Like, once MX-5 started to come in, that's just, that is what won. Yeah. All right, so, so we've got our car. Do we go to the local auto test to start getting used to short form courses, having to handle obstacles? I've never done auto testing, but I've seen it, and I think I would struggle with it because it's the tracks are a lot more complicated and longer. How long is a run usually for an auto test? Uh, it depends. I've done some that are up to a minute and a half, but you'll be a minute to a minute and a half run. Yeah, uh, which is a little bit longer than. Formula G, but Formula G has got usually less obstacles, but it's usually more time between each one. So, I distinctly remember a conversation with Milton at Coventry that involved the phrase, it's really difficult to remember the whole course. Oh, it is, yeah. <laughs> I struggle, yeah. So, so if you, obviously, I assume you came into, into Jim Carner from drifting then. Well, actually, it was Mike Newland, who does drifting. He was at a drift day and said, you, you should come do Shiotopia Barrel Sprint and Formula G. I've seen it, but never thought. I'd only just started motorsport as such. So I went to an FBS day, Barrel Sprint, and started from there and then, then did Formula G as well because it's two championships they used to run at the same time. Barrel Sprint's no more just because there was not enough competitors to make it viable, really. It was fun. It was fun, but it's not running anymore. So, okay, which so, was so? If I want to get, if I want to get into it, I basically I just have to go straight into Formula G. Yep, which is per, there's a, there's usually a test day once a year. Usually one at the beginning. There's also usually one at the end of the year. So if you just want to not be so serious and just get lots of practice in. A lot of the drivers go, but don't even take their cars and just like help and talk to new people. Mm. And at the usual days, it doesn't matter. He's, he's not. I don't get more practice than you were just because I'm a, a regular. It's you line the queue, and then it's and there's no one looking and going, "Oh, look how crap he's doing." So it's you, def- if it's me, no. I like because there's people that have been there that 
started, they was they'd really struggle. Um, a young guy, Owen, he was he was young, he was like thirteen, I think, and was really struggling. But then after a few, after one event, he like his times were coming down to only a few, a little bit off top guys. So anyone with a bit of practice would be can do good. Okay. So is there is there anywhere else other than a Formula G event to practice? You could technically go to Santa Padre for your run day, go into one of the play pens and make up a course or practice the accelerating hard into a, an obstacle, breaking, getting around it as quick as possible and getting out of it again, which is essentially what it basically is, the whole track. It's to an obstacle, going going ra- around it in the order it wants you to and then getting out of it to, towards the next one. Okay. Okay, so... So I've got to go to Formula G to compete. I start getting competitive. Yep. On that, you don't need to do anything. So you just need some decent tyres. I don't. You don't have to go buy semi slicks. Just some rain sports will do you. Like, don't have to go and spend thousands and thousands of pounds on the best tyres you can get. I mean, decent handbrake. Don't cost thousands of pounds, Milton. I know, but you know what I mean. You don't need to go <laughs> overbuild a car for Formula G. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know. I think, I think genuinely, if I was going to do Formula G, I would probably take my MX5. Would do well in your is. car because it's a grip car. So as long as it's got a diff that locks and a good handbrake, yeah. and people say you don't need a handbrake for drifting, you can get away with it. Formula G, you, it's pretty much essential. Okay, so so handbrake, cable, or uh, or hydro. I I had a cable to start with. And a, a properly adjusted cable handbrake works fine. Mantas has a cable handbrake, anyone grid with it, so. So, drifty button? He, drifty button or no yep. drifty button? It's whatever you want. He does. He has a stock interior apart from a, a different wheel. Okay. Okay. And he, was, and he runs 245 Toyo Triple R8s. So it's. People say, oh, my handbrake doesn't lock. It's not adjusted properly, or it's crap pads. Yeah. He's literally got the most grippiest MX-5. I think, Bryn, am I right, would you say? Pretty much? Probably, yeah. It's Triple eights at 245 at 15 PSI. Not going to be many more that are that grippy. No, that's... Try and use the handbrake anyway. Yeah, a stock handbrake, yeah, so... So it's like it really is. It's really down to your performance on the day, right? It's hundred percent, yeah. I've yeah. had rounds where I've done rubbish, and in the next round, I've done well. It, it's literally the next day. We used to sometimes do double headers, so it'll be a track on Saturday. We stay overnight, and then next on the Sunday, it'll be a totally different layout. Saturday, I did rubbish. Sunday, I got a podium, I think. So or the other round. So it's. So the year you won, how many events did you win during the course of that year? Uh, this was bar- barrel sprint. I won four out of six events, and then I came second on one of the ends. And I didn't even need to. I'd won the championship by that point. Okay. So it was it, absolutely it, chucking it down on the last event, so I didn't go. Points per win, I guess. Yeah, it's it's uh, championship points. So first gets. I think they've gone up to 100 now. Second gets 95 and so on. It's all on their website. We'll, I'll, I'll send you the link. Okay. That's cool. So we'll put that, we'll put the, uh, we'll put the scoring for like the top three places, I guess, yeah. in the description. Um, all right. So how did, how did Mantas then go from Formula G to Grid? What's... Well, we're quite lucky. I t- hopefully, they keep going. But the last few years, they do. Jim Carner themselves, Ken Block, mm. will say to Fueltopia, "Look, we like your events. We want to give one of your competitors, two of your competitors. They actually did a golden ticket. It's called. So it's a free pass to the event, and Monster will pay for your car. I think your flights to the destination mm. to compete." And so it's one, we don't get told which event it is or if it's going to happen. We just get told, by the way, this event, 
is a golden ticket event. Yeah. That means if you win that event, you go to grid. And it was a speed machine that last year or year before now. We was I it was between me, Mantas and Stephen McConnell. McDonnell McConnell McConnell? McConnell. Yeah, I'm yeah. Scotland guy. Yellow BMW. Really quick. Um, and it was between us because it was a two-day event. So the, I think I came, I got a second and a fourth, whereas Mantas got two first. So he obviously won. Yeah. And then the second ticket was that, I assume? Uh, that was for four-wheel drivers. I mean, I think, I think it was Bucky or maybe it was... Was that when he was in his Subaru still? Yeah, he's still in the Subaru. Uh, okay. so he might have the Corsa Raboon if it's done Okay, because the mini didn't really work out. It it didn't unfortunately because it had modified either subframe or something. Mm. It wasn't wasn't allowed to be used for competition. Right, basically one of the competitors turned up on. I've I've helped Milton a couple of times, and I turned up, and there was an original mini with basically a whole Subaru under it. Yeah, <laughs> but the only it just didn't have um. Because it had modified, it was it was perfectly safe and well engineered and stuff. But because it was modified in a way that's, if you let that one slip, then other people could, you can yeah got to have a sort of clear rule. Which the rules in modifying your car for the this series isn't that strict. That I think that you know that that kind of that makes sense. So. And then, and then, grid is just on another level. It's Formula, Formula G with a bigger crowd. Eight million or um, a few million people viewing on mm-hmm. YouTube, Facebook, and it's name driver like Peter Solberg, Oliver Solberg, Ken Block, Ryan Turk, all your big names in motorsport. Pretty much, sure turn up to that. Quite a lot of big names anyway, and it's a lot of the local talent for that area. Yeah. They did it for Lund- uh Quite a few people from the UK went when it was in U- at Sandlepod, so they did an event there. And then it went to South Africa and then Greece or one of the... So then they chose Greece drivers to f- help fill up the rest of the slots. That is big. That is just, yeah, it's the same as Jim Carter, but bigger bigger course it's a lot bigger course a lot you've got people um jared dehanda is one that's commentating it so he's one of he's the voice of formula drift so it's a solid is this it, it's actually it's probably one of the more accessible oh did i say mantis also won a harley davidson oh what, a grid because he won grid he won a custom harley davidson so it's a harley davidson motorbike but then the tank and a few other bits were modified and painted special with a grid livery so how long was mantas competing i think it, i don't know fully his history we'll have we'll get him on one day yeah, yeah. um but he started he's from Lith, lithuania yeah but formula g right he's done a lot of auto solids in the uk as well but he started not long after me but he had a lot of auto solo practice, and that he's. I remember. I remember when I came to help you, and he sort of just started, and he came in this car and went out there, and you could tell that he had this auto solo practice because he went out there and put in a much tidier run than everybody else. He was still sliding it and all of that, but just a little bit, just enough. You could tell he yeah. kind of. He had that intrinsic experience from what he'd done before mm. and turned up in a basically standard Mark It was a standard uh, yeah. silver. He almost went to grid three, or well, it be three years ago now. He came second. Uh, we did an event in London uh, outside one of the Millennium Stadium, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, and he came second by this much. He knocked a barrel over, so it was... This is back when it was fuel type of barrel sprint. So he he knocked a barrel over and lost by, because I think it was a two-second penalty, he lost by like 2.2 seconds. 
and that was against Adam Elder, who then I think Adam Elder won it as well, or did he win it or come second to Luke? But anyway, he was in a stock road car with nothing. I think he just had normal one nine five. I think he had Toyos on at the time still, and yeah. he came. I just remember like seeing him turn up in this very standard car, put on a run that it didn't look anything special. It just kind of looked like somebody had turned up to have a go and then looked at the board and it was like up there. You were like, oh, okay. It was top. This is- he, li- he literally used to arrive at an event, turn up to an event, take his lunch bag out, took his backpack out of the car, put his helmet on and then go. It was, it was yeah, a moment's notice you could get st- head home. No trailer in it or putting up gazebos or changing wheels and tyres. It's super simple. Just go out, get it done. Go He's out. just got the natural talent for it. But that, I mean, I mean, like, actually thinking, thinking about you as well, you know, it wasn't... I don't remember it being a massive amount of time from you starting doing Fueltopia to... Yeah. To get in podiums and stuff, um, challenging. No, it took. I did three events in my first year, and sort of just to try it. Then the next year, I ended up winning. I got driver's driver, which is the best driver from voted by all the other drivers, mm. and uh, I remember what the other one was. But what was the question again? Yeah, just like like I don't remember, I, you know, like I don't remember it being a long time from Milton's doing this barrel sprinting nonsense, yeah, conversation to Milton's won a thing. Yeah, it was. I think I did like three events in the first year. This is twenty sixteen, I think. Yeah, just to try. I think I did a couple of barrel sprint and one Formula G, and from then I was hooked. It was. It was a bit different to drifting, but it was a lot of fun. The comp- when you get when you, when you qualify and you're waiting there, and Bryn's got really cringy video, I hate it, and he's got the camera on me and waiting to find out. I'm like, you get to the get. I, th- I think I did all right. So you get to the top ten, you like, so you know, right, right, um, maybe I didn't do as well. You get top five, oh crap, or did I even qualify? And you hear your name and you shock and and the adrenaline you get from that, and then your battles and. Each battle you win, it's like an adrenaline high each time. And yeah, it was. And I, think, I think the other element of it is is obviously, you know, you tag the barrel, you knock the barrel over, you tag Two an obstacle, penalty. you you get a time addition, don't you? But if you go the wrong way round it, it's a DNF. Okay. I would I would have won one of the rounds when I first started, but I decided I looked I was. If I missed a gear. From right, is that I missed saying? a gear. It was really dark. It was it was raining, and I was ahead. I looked up. I'd missed a gear, so I, had to, I was like, "Why is it on gear?" Back into second. Looked up, and the barrel was in the middle of the car, and I had to make a decision: do I go left or right? I chose left, which made the next obstacle even harder. But it was the wrong way. If I'd have ploughed into it, yeah, I would have been. I'd have had a two-second penalty. But I think this is going against Craigie. Mm. And I think I made up enough time on that side and the other side. I still would have won. But because I decided not to hit it. You got a DNF. I got an DNF. So it doesn't matter how fast I went on the next leg. You, yeah. It was, I was you're like in left. Like, you're already like I, a minute behind, basically. Well, it was, yeah, it adds 99 minutes on, basically. Ah. Instead, unless I, I still pushed on the other side because if you swap over and then he made a mistake on that line, it then goes down to the time of the one run. Both sides you get so even if you're out, it's still good to push. Yeah, good. I think and on the subject of like getting improving quickly, I think one thing I noticed from the sidelines about Jim Carner that is very good for that is firstly, it's fast paced. They're very short runs. So you get a lot of track time on the same track. And it means that you can improve and practice quite quickly because you keep going. And of course, at the end of that, you get a clear time. 
So you know if you're improving or not. And because you get all these short runs, you can try different things and and you instantly see whether or not you've improved. And the other thing is because you are head to head with somebody else, you actually get a really good idea of where you are good and bad because you can tell in your peripheral vision whether you're ahead or behind. Mm. And it changes throughout a run normally. You'll be ahead through one obstacle and then suddenly you'll see, oh my God, they're really ahead of me. So I know I've done bad in practice on that obstacle and I can focus on it. So I think it's a really, really good environment for improving your driving quickly because you get all these things thrown at you. Actually, if I took the stage yet, I'd be ahead right up until the first obstacle. (laughs) <laughs> maybe we get off the line pretty quick now but i can um, confirm from today's tuning trip to mexico oh yeah <laughs> that the stadia still shifts very you've very quickly o- you've got that open visa right yeah, yeah. I, I have made the decision that it's not getting sold anytime soon today <laughs> yeah. i just Ooh. had that thing, i had that thing where i was like i don't drive mm-hmm. it that much maybe i could do without it and then I've gone out in it today for a run, and I'm like, nope. Nope. It just spreads happiness and joy everywhere it goes. What Brim was saying is, like, one of us was, we've got a, a really good episode of me versus Luke Woodham. This is back before I was turboed. Love that video. And we did heel, We did a foot cam as well, so you can see in a heel and toe action. And you go around, you see off the line, we're neck and neck until his power kicks in and he can use all of it whereas I'm flat from the beginning mm. and he just off and then we get round the first corner and then you see us going head to head and you see he's ahead of me we st- finish and then I come and then we swap sides same again but then this time we're both heading towards the barrel at the same time and we get round it but then and then there's a really tight twisty bit and you see I'm actually ahead of him and then we head towards Trump and you see him actually pick up the pace because he's got the more power. It shows that you don't have to have a 400 power horsepower SR. I think one of the most interesting things for me about it is actually for, for a series that can get you into the big league really quick, right? Not guaranteed, but yeah, you could no, get... You, have, if you're good enough, right? And you have to lock on like, the top, yeah. It's not like Formula One where you've got to go karting and then you've got to go, I don't know, some other series. And then some Formula other three, series. Formula Two, etc. Yeah. Formula Three, Formula Two, Formula Renault somewhere in there. So like you're fifty before you ever get in an F one car. Right? Yeah, unless you started when you was four. Yeah. So like but but Formula G actually you can go out, you can have a lot of fun, and having been at events filming Milton, it's a lot of fun just chilling out in the not, pits. That's, that's what I say, it's not just about on track, it's mm. we, we a lot of the time we say it's not we're not friends at track it's a Fueltopia family. Yeah. And we have a end of season like dinner dance awards thing. So we all turn up, we have dinner, we all have a joke and everyone's have a pie. A bowl. That might be another one of the other groups, but no. <laughs> um, it's just about hanging out at the pits and some of the best times at Pod, because that's where a lot of the events are, mm. just because it's convenient. It's quite close to everyone. I thought, um, I thought actually, I thought it was really one of the one of the most telling things for me at Coventry was how humble everybody was with people coming and asking for your autograph. Yeah, that that even for us as drivers, even after the second year of doing it, it was still surreal. Like getting mobbed after 2018 because I won it and people chanting your name. It's still doesn't still felt weird and not right. And but you do, they almost feel like a, you feel like a mini celebrity. But when you're seeing kids getting into the car and they're ecstatic. And they're huge one, and you see their parents are happy because they're seeing their child happy. Hmm. It almost getting in the car. <laughs> <laughs> that... <laughs> yeah, that's not just me getting. That makes it worth it, like seeing yeah. a smile on people's faces. I think that was. I think that was a really cool thing, and it's one of those moments as a as a videographer that's really really weird, right? Because 
you really want to film it because you can tell that Milton's like excited by it. And these kids are really having a good day and their parents are having a good day. But yep. actually, you've got to interrupt the parents before you film and go, as long as I don't get your kids facing this shot, Fort Milton's driver video, can I do a bit of recording? Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's... It's such a surreal, it's such a surreal thing. But those moments, there's, there's a couple of them where you get a back shot of Milton signing something for a child so their face isn't in the shot. But... Just filming those and and the happiness that that's bringing to someone, and you can just you can tell that there's a little petrol head there going, I want to go racing, right? You, yeah. you know, we all know what that looks like when someone's brain goes, I want to go racing. That's it. That's what I yeah. want to do, and you you see that like repeatedly through the course of of the sort of signing session, which may think... have also converted a few people to buy the MX5 because every yeah. time I get in the car, you say. Press that button. And headlights really, go up. Headlights go down. The really go surreal up. thing about Coventry for me was after Milton had done his signing, I'd gone back to the car to get some more battery packs. And someone that had had their stuff signed by Milton came up to me and went, oh, you were hanging out with you were hanging out with Ryan. Can we get your signature too? <laughs> <laughs> so these two kids just got, I was just like, yeah, fine, whatever, because it was going to make them happy. And these was it, on the, was it actually to pay for the check or something or a parking ticket, yeah? <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it was genuinely like, it was just like I, I just grabbed some of the some of the violent running stickers out of the car, obviously safe for kiddies ones, and signed them. Yeah. And gave them. I was like, there you go. Ha- have, yeah, that have was fun. But like, yeah, it's. I think I think for an event that is really open and easy for people to get into. My ob- my observations as an outsider is it's really it, it's relatively easy to get into. Like I could. All right, my it's not yeah. built a bit. You, but I could come no, down you don't, tomorrow. Yeah. You don't have to be signed or whatever. You can you can put your name you can a lot of the time you can come on the day and say I'd like to try please. Mm. Take they'll take your fee and sign you in. You you're good to go for the whole day's racing. Yeah. A lot what of time they like you the to fee for a day's racing. I think it's 110. It may have changed. Do you need do you need track insurance? No don't even need no. You just you don't even you don't even need a driver's license technically. Because I've been I've been at auto show events where they've they've asked to check my track insurance. Wow. Some cones in a car park. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. a series, but uh, one of the But it's I, I I genuinely like I think of of all the. And one thing to point out before is it's run by there's a few people that run it, but it's two main people, mm. Becky and Andy. They run the whole thing on their own, off their own back. It's not their full time job. Yeah, they put on this series and Coventry and everything off no, their own back. I think that I think the fact that it's people that care about it comes across in the way that things work there. Yeah. I've I've been at a fair few series and I think genuinely some of the friendliest paddocks of when I've been in the paddock with Milton that I've, that I've ever seen anywhere. Is it just me? Do I just make everyone happy and give hugs and stuff? You do, to be fair. Yeah. Like a little glowing, glowing ember. It's, it's really boy hard one. to like pick on Milton because it's like shooting a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> well. But, but genuinely like I think if anyone, my, I've had friends who say, "What should I get into?" And I've gone, "Well, go." My my view on it is, go do auto solo, so you get used to tight, niggly courses. I think auto solo is hard on a Formula G, to be honest. That's kind of, that's kind of my logic on it, though. You go do auto solo, it's harder. So then you go do Formula G, and you're good at it. But then the only difference between Form G is I think there's more pressure. Yeah. Like um, like your nerves, because you're on the line and you're... Because it's a drag-style Christmas tree. It's exactly the same as what Santa Pod Drag Strip or others. They press the button and they can do it. It's timed. Hang on one second. Where was we? Um, You were doing a clap. Halfway through a sentence when you just decided to do this. Yeah. Sorry, Christmas yeah. Was... Tree. Christmas tree. 
Yeah, you, oh yeah, so, so it's... you were talking about the Christmas tree and making me uh, no pressure thing because you got distracted by showing off your clapper. That sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not the pressure. No, that sounds right. Uh, it's because you're side by side with someone. Yeah, and you know you want to get them off the. It's it's everyone does it at the traffic lights. You wait for green and go. You always race the guy next to you, even though you don't know, even though they don't know they're racing. Hmm. They're still lost. Less is a cop. They, they win. Um, but you've it's that's the difference between auto sold it's just you you've got to beat yeah whereas think, Formula G I think that element of Formula G makes it feel more competitive certainly oh yeah 100% I've never done auto sold so I'd like to try it but my car's not road le- a lot of the classes are mm. road legal MOT stock or absolutely mental and it's just kit cars is that right Bryn? Yeah, pretty much. Well, if we if we go to anywhere that's got it on, and I've got the five with me, Milton, you can have a go in mine. I don't oh. break cars. I'm actually quite nice to cars usually, so mm. should be fun. So why I trust you with it? Um, I've driven his car, and I'm gonna point to Matt, even though he's not there. I've driven Matt's car. <laughs> I did crash it, but it's fun. Yeah, but neither of them own limited editions. <laughs> yeah, but mine's proven as an auto test solo champion winning words. <laughs> Mine did fast on cone course. <laughs> did fast, not barrel cones. <laughs> did you? Did you, cones. Bryn? Did you win? Did you win a king of the dunce hats? I didn't get a king of the dunce hats. No, we don't use. We we have, we have little witches hats. There's no bins. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah. So, actually, it, it is a really accessible motorsport. Because a hundred quid for. For a, for a weekend All racing, it's not a lot of money, really. No. And, and also, it's it's accessible to watch as well, I think, is one thing mm. to point out. Rather than just doing it, it's, it's actually really good to watch for all the same reasons. It's fast-paced. There's not a lot of time investment. If you see it's live, you can watch it, and you'll get most of the action for not... You don't have to sit down all day like you do with a lot of motorsports. And it's all happening right there. If you go and watch it, it's not like you have to wait a minute and then they come round again. It's all happening in front of you. And the same thing with the lights and the pressure. It just builds this atmosphere. Mm. It's exciting especially, to watch. Especially because when you usually, it's a stop box at the end. And then you don't know if you've won because they've got to add the times up in the tent. And then there's a guy standing there with two flags. So you're both, both drivers are sitting there panting and wheezing because they've just drove their ass off. But they don't know if they've won yet. And so the crowd can see the two flags and then he points to whoever wins. And that point is your heart's in your mouth, kind of, did I do, have I won? Did I get through or not? And even as the crowd it is, it's suspenseful. It's really, really good for that. Yeah, you hear in videos and stuff like people gasping, like, oh, who won that? And, oh, Milton's ahead, no, no, he's behind. And he was quicker in the first one. He was so... It's... And right. usually there's always a light side that's naturally quicker than the other i think that's so, one of the other things about it is like and it's something that it does share with auto solo is it like the difference between winning and being king of the losers in second place is that it can be milliseconds we've had 10 hundredth of the, 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 i lost a barrel sprint round to adam elder we was car sharing and it came down to reaction time. So if they did from when you left the line and it would have been identical times within millions of a second, it was purely down to he had a better reaction time because he knew his car and how to launch with his clutch. It was a, He's got a big SR so yeah. and big strong clutch. So I'm not used to that. No, so I didn't want to... excuses for why he launched like a granny off the limiter, slipping the clutch the whole way <laughs> to the finish line. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to stall it and look like a twat. So, <laughs> but I, I genuinely, I can't. I but, can't uh, think of any other cause... budget motorsport that you can get into. No, for less. For, I, it, it's there's not there's not a lot of rules and regs. There's a few basic safety ones. If you've got a convertible, they like to have a hard top, uh, okay. a rollover bar. But a lot, if you've got an MXO, if you're pretty much going to get a half cage anyway. Mm. 
And if you don't, you should really think about it. Shout out GC Fabs. Like you're saying, like I don't no yeah. no no support from him. He's just and, a really bad and he's the engineer, player. so you should probably listen to. I trust him. By yeah. by grants, I uh, roll bars seriously. That that awesome. said, that said, I did see a rather magical Cusco seven point that I've always wanted. Seven. Yeah. Is that the one with the really long dash dodger arms? So if you get any weight on it, it'll just crumple and you. Yeah. No, no, it mounts. Uh, the seventh arm mounts to uh, where the handbrake is. It's a really weird setup, but I quite like it. <laughs> to the Google he goes. So yeah, so Brin's Ready. just had a look at the Cusco seven pointer that weird. he's weirded out by, but nonetheless, it's just one extra point of safety, Brin. At least he's got one strong solid piece. <laughs> the other two aren't very solid. <laughs> so uh so yeah, so I think I think we're kind of at the end of Jim Carner for dummies, right? Everybody knows yeah. what it's about. Everybody knows what's made it famous. Some and it's whether you go to grid or not, board, right? That's <laughs> no, we're not for much longer. No, not for any more because he's not with Ford anymore. But that's okay. a different subject. Because the last one was because Travis Pastrana did an event in a Subaru. Fair enough. So, so if people want to watch it to get an idea, those who haven't seen it before, definitely do. Definitely, do. yeah, really, it is a really exciting watch. It is not something that you can fall asleep to like Formula One. I'm just going to keep saying stuff like that, by the way, till Bernie Eccleston sues me because I've got nothing for him to take. She's going around the barrel. She's doing it. She's doing it. In the finish box. Oh, now she's doing donuts. <laughs> she's definitely she's literally guy. practicing mate how are you gonna how are you gonna feel the day you get beaten by your daughter the happy proudest ever are you sure you're I'll gonna probably, be a little bit jealous no i'll probably cry more than she will you'll just turn into a <laughs> sobbing mess oh you you know i will be a sobbing mess yep. <laughs> so yeah so watching it watching it how can i watch it when so, it's on because obviously it's not at the moment we at the moment we there's no live streams purely because usually it's a, a, quite often it's Santa Pod and you can never trust their Wi-Fi or their right. internet, especially when we because we often do it at car shows. So we've done an event at USC, which is always cool. Yeah. So you've got a big crowd anyway, and then you've got an event, a race event going on at the same time, which is quite cool. Um, but. I don't know if we're going to do it for the next series, but the last two seasons have been actually filmed by a proper professional TV crew. Series one is out on Motor Trend. It's also on their YouTube channel. I'll control CTRL. Mm. They do a lot of RC stuff, and they've been working with Bagsy and things like that as well. Um, but they've got all the videos on their YouTube page. Okay. Definitely check them out. Um, or just come to the events. And you can check Best out... You can check out a video of Milton on our channel. I'll put the link to that in the description as well. Um, that is a bit of a semi-promo video for Milton, though. The best thing to do would be, while you're at a car show, if you see that the Formula G is there, go and have a look. It's going to be more interesting than those girls with not a lot of clothes on that just sort of drape themselves on cars. You'll get bored of them if you've got like a brain. So you just wander over to the Formula G and watch some people doing good stuff. And pits is <laughs> subscribe to their only fans, all right? <laughs> um, it's usually an open pits as well, so don't obviously don't go sniff around people's tools. But if you want to ask any drivers, we will always talk to you. Mm. I'm not trying to sound big, but there's no there's no there's secrecy no to there's some people, but that's just me throwing shade. There is, yeah. There's no ego that I've experienced. Anyway. No, there's not. It's there's no secrets, and there's no. Oh, how are you so fast? Oh, I've up my tire pressures, or I'm actually going into this corner in second gear instead of first to get a bit more traction. There's no, there's no sort of hiding things to try and get, a, or cheating or competitive edges. Yeah, I think that goes back to. I think that goes back to what we said 
on the episode when we had Nick from Club Racing on, of at entry level, you talk more in the pits to your competition. One you- thing Mike Noonan said to me was when I first started, was going into battle, I said, don't go easy or don't try and make it close. Go as fast as you can. He said he'd rather win against me trying his hardest than or lose against me but by being neck and neck rather than being 10 seconds ahead he wants to win on his own merit not because he or whatever i'd want to win because i knew i was better mm. did that make sense so yeah. what he basically said is don't get starstruck and let me win so that you protect my ego yes <laughs> Because what you said was quite confusing there, mate. <laughs> Shall I try that again? I got what it was No, we got it. We, we, we've translated it for the people. It's good. It's good. So, Basically, try hard. Yeah, so I think I think the take-homes from this episode are Jim Carner, try it. Definitely try it. Come to a test and train day or the round one or whenever we're allowed to go play. Um, And then MX5 is the answer. Always the answer. Unless you're doing four-wheel drive, I don't think there's a four-wheel drive MX-5. But We could put bits of my stage gear onto an MX-5. It's a really small prop shaft, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially Done. the length of the gearbox on the stage gear, actually. Um, and then... Yeah, give it a go. Get out there, have some fun. I think that's, I think that's kind of it. it there's, not, there's nothing stopping you. From going down in a oh, stock one, MX5, yeah, with some you don't need tires. It can be your road car, it can be your daily. It's not abusive on the car, mm. as long as you've done the basic stuff that you do for a track day, maintenance wise. You've checked it's got oil. You've checked it's got water. You've checked you've got tire tread. Yeah, that's the basics. And then next one off that is a decent handbrake and a lock and diff if you're rear wheel drive. Front wheel drive, I don't know about this, but. No, I think that's fair. I think that's kind of... I think that's all you need to know if you're a dummy. Yeah, you don't you know need a about... built car. Yeah. That is... that is uh, As we always say, don't overbuild your car. Go into Thousands. it and, and, and figure out where you're weakest and improve that bit. Until you start overdriving the car to compensate for a car's performance, that's when you need to upgrade that bit for the next step that you can afford. So um, I think that you need to, if you stay to the end of this episode, you need to hit the subscribe button because you're clearly interested in what we've got to say. You need to hit the like button. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about next in our whatever it is for dummies series. Um, There's plenty more stuff to talk about. Um, And I've been Bam. He's been Bryn. He's been the king of the bins. Doodles. Go find videos of him. What? I said go find videos of him driving. Yeah, go, yeah do go find on videos both of him. On these videos. channels. Yeah, those channels. These channels. <laughs> um, and uh, have an awesome week. We will be back uh, next week. The maybe an unboxing video again soon. There might be a break, but we'll... there might be. Yeah, there, there is a family thing going on in the background. There may be a break, but probably not, because um, I'm a workaholic. And on that note, of me being a workaholic, toodles. Bye. Toodles. <laughs>